Hello Bampton fans and welcome to this video on how to choose a Bampton racket. Now if you don't know anything about us, let me tell you pretty much all we've done for the last decade or so is test Bampton rackets and all our work is on the platform called the E-Zone and that is why this video will probably be nothing like the other videos on how to choose a Bampton racket because we have personally tested, I have personally had 800 rackets gone through my hands and so my understanding and feel for rackets is, well, at least worthy of an opinion. So as I said, the E-Zone is a platform where we have tested rackets in great, great detail. And the prime purpose of the E-Zone is helping the badminton community on how to choose a badminton racket. Now this subject in itself is quite complex or could be very complex. So we're going to try and make it as simple as possible and not get into great, great detail. When you're choosing a badminton racket, there are a number of things to th think about. Firstly, the level of play. Are you a, a beginner? Are you a beginner that's going to remain a beginner? So you're a beginner that goes to a court with three or four of you, has a bit of a, a knock around, then you go off for, a, uh, you know, maybe you go home back to work or you go for a bite to eat, a drink, and you do the same thing on repeat every week and you're getting your weekly allowance of exercise. Or are you a beginner that's been actually being coached so there's a strong chance in the months ahead your game will continue to improve. So it depends what kind of beginner you are. At, um, intermediate players who are developing themselves and of course we have advanced players and professional players. So the level matters on how you choose a badminton racket. Also your strategy matters. Are you an attacking player? Are you a defensive player? Are you a strategic player? All of these above uh, points are relevant when it comes to choosing a badminton racket. Now, in terms of choosing a badminton racket, the first, the three things you'll hear most about are balance point, shaft stiffness, and overall racket weight. All are significant, all, this is where the complexity in this video could come, but we're not gonna go there, is when you, you know, you have light rackets, they're generally always head heavy because they need to be to get any repulsion out of the shuttle. Heavier rackets are, can be head light, uh, you know, and flexible. And, and this variation in flex of the shaft, overall weight, balance point, that can be moved in all sorts of ways depending on the racket weight, depending on what the, uh, the company's made, depending on what the player's requirements are. So let's just very, very quickly run through key aspects of racket specifications. Balance point. Manufacturers denote balance point in very different ways. Some use diagrams, some use millimeters. Overall, badminton rackets are measured in millimeters for their balance point. Now on the E-Zone, we measure all balance points exactly the same so that the person choosing the balance racket can make a like-for-like -like comparison and we independently test all of those balance points ourselves. We measure them in millimeters. What is the relevance of a balance point? The balance point affects the impact on shuttle the more head heavier the racket, the more impact it has, and it can also affect how heavy a racket feels in your hand, and it affects airspeed. Stiffness. Again, the stiffness of a racket, <clears throat> so when we're talking about stiffness, we're talking about this, I mean, a lot of manufacturers measure the stiffness from this point to this point to the end of the head, and some measure it from right from the bottom right to the top the overall stiffness we measure just the shaft stiffness how much flex is there in a shaft of a racket and what what effect does the shaft stiffness have well generally you can get very stiff medium stiff or flexible shafts and the difference is how the racket feels again if you have a very stiff racket and you don't have very good technique or very strong forearms or fingers it can make the racket feel really slow and really heavy to use it can also create uh, injuries in people. We've had a lot of people over the years who are using very stiff rackets and having to over pronate their arm and that causes uh, issues with the rotator cuffs, the shoulder and the elbow. So you have to be careful when you're selecting rackets that are very stiff. The overall effects on this uh, uh, of the shaft affect repulsion because if you can't get the shaft to bend as you're playing, repulsion can be affected, but also control is affected. If a shaft tends to flex a lot, some people find it harder to control. We haven't found that that generally is congruent with flexible rackets, so you can't control them. Ultimately, you can control any racket given enough time and practice. 
Racket weight is very similar to the balance point. The racket weight can feel, make the racket feel slow. It can make the racket, it can affect the airspeed and it can affect impact on the shuttle. If you're very, very light rackets have to be super weighted towards the head. Otherwise there'll be no repulsion on the shuttle whatsoever. Um, also with very heavy rackets, particularly if they're stiff, particularly if they're head heavy, they again, are prone to a lot of players having injuries in their shoulders, in their rotator cuffs, in their elbows. So please be careful when you're selecting something that is really heavy, really stiff, uh, and really head, uh, head heavy too. That's all we're gonna cover on the basics of those three. They're gonna be mentioned in every video you watch because they are the main categories of uh, differences between rackets. Now, one thing that we mention a lot, but doesn't get mentioned anywhere else, is airspeed. It is massive, and it is, why is it not included? If you get a racket that feels really slow in the air, it's not aerodynamic, the weight of it doesn't work for you, the shaft stiffness doesn't work for you, the racket feels crazy slow, you're not getting the airspeed you need when you're trying to generate power smash or even short sharp bursts, it's gonna be an issue. And what that affects is everything. It affects everything. If you have a racket that is not quick enough in your hands, defense will suffer, drive shots will suffer, clears will suffer and your smash power will also suffer and to add insult to injury you will be physically exerted as well as your muscle and your arms will be really tired and you'll be more prone to injury if you haven't got something that flies to the air reasonably efficiently so at badminton racket review in our testing process we came to realize that air airspeed in a racket is the fourth element that is missing in most people's analysis. It's massive and so, so important. Um, in actual fact, we put a lot of priority on airspeed because we realized that a racket that skims through the air at super, super speed really makes the player's life way, way easier. Uh, it, it really is a massive factor. That is that section covered. Now let's talk about strategy. Strategic players, we would recommend a racket that has got fast airspeed, is not too head heavy, a medium flex shaft, stability on impact will be crucial for strategic players. Um, you need good control and the weight, while well, that's personal choice. Do you like light rackets? Do you like heavier rackets? That really is down to what you personally prefer. Strategic players will be those players who don't rely just on smash power. They're always looking for the gaps, they're looking to control the shuttle across court, straight, push the shuttle gently into gaps to get a lift off the opponent and so that their, their partners can go on the attack themselves. They're looking to you know do all sorts of cross court stuff and it's always about finding the space. Well, that's how strategic, strategic players work. They look for the weaknesses and they play to those weaknesses. Defensive players. So defensive players will be the people, the kind of players, you must have come across these guys, absolutely crazy defense, can't get through the defense. If you drop, they'll come in, got good footwork and they'll lift and they just keep lifting and they exhaust their opponents. We've seen it at professional level where people are just like, oh, can't do anymore, knackered. Uh, you know, you would have seen it. In, a, in, in, in the International uh, Badminton World Federation tournaments, you see rallies that go on and they're smashing on this defend, smash and defend, smash and defend. So defensive players, you and I'm not talking international professional here, we're talking about club, county, district players. You need ideally a lighter weight racket, you need really fast airspeed, you need balance slightly towards the head so you get the repulsion if you're looking to clear and clear and clear and I would say a medium flex shaft will work really well for you guys. Attacking, play Attacking players. We're talking about you people who love to smash. You love the sound of it. You love the effect of it. When it hits the opponent's chest, the hip, the frame of their uh, racket and the shot just flies off in some random direction. Just getting through with pure power. Loads of people love this. They love it. I've seen mainly doubles players, even singles players, they just love winning the point off a smash and let's be honest most points in Bampton are won from the smash so what criteria would an attacking player be recommended to look at weight is personal choice some people hate light rackets some people hate heavy rackets it's personal overall we would say 
choosing a racket in the 4U category, maybe slightly heavier, sort of capping out about 88, 89 grams would be this cap, but starting off sort of in that region of, you know, 84 grams upwards is a good place to start. Head heavy biased is pretty handy when you're looking to get on the attack. And a racket that is slightly stiffer, medium stiff, is going to be a good plan. And that recipe for attacking players who want to get a smash off is going to work for 90% of uh, people out there. Of course, there are people with freakish strength who can get 95 gram rackets and still bend the shaft and get massive smashes. Uh, but for 90% of club, district and county players, that should work out really well. Uh, what's going to be crucial to for an attacking player, if you don't like the spec we've just given you, it doesn't work for you, ideally you want good airspeed, you definitely want balance towards the head, how much is up to you, but definitely balance towards the head, and you want to be able to make sure you can get the shaft to flex. If you've got a super stiff racket and your airspeed isn't that fast, your technique isn't that good, or you you know whatever the reason, and you're not getting the shaft to bend during your smash process, you will not get a good smash off the racket. It's very important. There's flex as you go and make impact. The, sh the shaft must flex to get the power off on the shuttle. So you need to know your own ability in that respect. Right. So. Strategic players are covered, defensive players are covered, attacking players is, are covered. You understand the basics of balance point and the effects of a balance point. You understand the overall weight, you understand shaft stiffness, and you understand airspeed. Now, let's get into your category, your level. Beginners, there is no complication for beginners at, at, whatsoever. It's very, very simple. Buy a racket that is heavy-ish, so 90 grams or more, but the shaft is flexible and it's a head heavy bias. Why? Weird recommendation, not really. We want the, the shaft to flex easily. We definitely want weight on the on the racket. Racket should weigh a little bit. So we're looking at a three U category racket, racket and we want the head heavy. Why? Because when you're doing this kind of motion, which is a lot of how beginners play, you're only getting that much movement in the actual racket flight and when the racket flight is uh, is very short you can hear there's not much impact on the shuttle and when the shuttle's not getting the impact it doesn't fly if it, the racket has more weight it's head biased and you're able to get a little bit of flex on that shaft you're going to get more flight so beginners who just play socially and expect the level to remain pretty much where it has been for the last whatever amount of time you've been playing and for the foreseeable future, get a racket that with that spec and just keep that racket. There's no point in looking to upgrade until your game improves. Beginners who are being coached and will probably be improving over the coming months, you can definitely look to take advice on the intermediate racket phase, but start with the same racket I've just recommended and then you can start looking at intermediate rackets. Intermediate players, developing players, so developing players would have gone from here to starting to at least turn on from the smash, starting to look at some rotation, starting to make sure that they're coming forward with their racket leg, you know so basic stuff is starting to fall into place now and for you guys you've now got really the whole market available to look at. By now you would have had a chance to maybe try some rackets intermediate players i think you should definitely be looking at weight again is personal do you prefer a really light and far we've seen much more demand for lightweight rackets than we've ever seen ever so there's a lot of decent lightweight rackets out there if you're a lightweight fan i think there's a real benefit in having a lightweight racket for an intermediate player unless you are properly hulked out you're a hulk kind of person you know i've got i've got muscle mate i've got a solid muscle yeah if you're that kind of dude no problem if you're that kind of lady no problem big arms big forearms and you want the way you can handle it fine most people probably would do well with a decent lightweight racket and a good intermediate racket will be something like the abroz venom 2 because it flies through the air really fast it has a good sweet spot size and you're likely to hit the, the shuttle fairly crisp on most shots and it costs 50 pounds which means it's nice to upgrade in a year's time as your game keeps developing 
other rackets that you can consider in the lightweight well you can just go on the e-zone and check those for yourself but if you want quick references we do i would not recommend the j nice elastic air for an absolute beginner who's just become intermediate but for stronger intermediate players yes we have the windstorm 74 we have the windstorm 72 we have the um mizuno 40s light 40s 20 even the 50 spirit or swift are all pretty good rackets for you to consider and they're high grade rackets if you want something that's a little bit more professional on the Ionix front which is what i know you're waiting for uh lightweight i'd probably we did used to really like the nano flare 270 but it's had real fragility issues where people are saying frames have cracked and broken so we stopped recommending it at the moment the astrox light 27i is the one we'd recommend or the nano flare light 33 is but availability is a huge issue so can't really recommend them with absolute confidence if i'm honest with you so the windstorm 72s 74 venom 2 j nice elastic air 73 i mean that is world-class lightweight rackets right there anyway okay so and if you want a heavier rackets well then again go to the easy there's a lot of heavier rackets the j nice black panther for you is also worth considering in that lightweight category because the racket does not feel for you at all and if you want heavier rackets so let's go to advanced players strong intermediate players who can handle a bit more weight they can handle something that needs a bit more you know technique uh, players who are absolutely solid now in their technique they know you know the full rotation on the smash whether they, they're reaching out properly they're getting their wrist engaged grips changing you know, so we're talking about people who really have got some accomplishment in the game and a really good understanding of it well in that respect it really does become a personal choice now because we see too much variety when it comes to advanced players and what advanced players like some love the lightweight rackets some prefer something heavier so i've just gone through a list there on the lightweight rackets the same would apply to advanced players if you want something that's really advanced and really decent but lightweight you also have got the leaning aeronaut 9000i that is a professional grade lightweight racket you have the windstorm leaning windstorm 72s again stiffer but seriously got the power got the speed got everything you need for a lightweight racket going into the middle levels the full U category, honestly speaking, I would say that you're looking at the uh, Kawasaki Honor S9. It does flex, so if you don't like too much flex, it probably won't be for you. You've got the J Nice Black Panther for you. You've got the um, Mizuno JPX5 Blitz, which does flex again, but it feels heavier to use. So it does take a certain kind of technique to be able to use that racket. And if you want something at a higher grade, more professional level, you've got the Yonex. Astrox 88 Pro 88D, sorry, Pro for you. Gosh, it's just a long title for a racket. That is the Yonex racket we'd recommend. That is quite stiff, and control with that, it does take sorry, some the practice. Leaning, the, uh, the, sorry, Mizuno uh, Fortius 10 Power is a super heavy, really head heavy, world class, well, used by X World Champions racket to both you know the aeronaut 9000i by leaning and the mizuno 40 is 10 power are 170 180 pound racket so really up there in terms of the grade of the racket even the yonex astrox pro uh 88d for you is 150 so those rackets are even more expensive than the yonex just to finish off with the advanced players, really you can choose pretty much what you want because you're an advanced player. You've been around, you wouldn't have gotten a, become an advanced player in seven months. You've been playing for some time, you've had a lot of experience, you've played matches, you've played tournaments, you've played club nights, you've done a lot of practicing. So you would have tried a lot of rackets. You by now, you, by now, you already know what works for you. But the rackets I've, make, uh, I've just recommended are certainly worthy of consideration. I hope that has helped with the choosing of a Bampton racket. We've talked about the variation between balance point shaft stiffness overall weight and airspeed airspeed don't forget airspeed people we've talked about strategic players defensive players attacking players and we've talked about beginners intermediate and advanced players i think that covers it all really really well the last thing i'm going to say is singles players should be looking at two really well actually maybe three crucial elements the racket should be crazy easy to clear with. How many clears get played in a singles match? Loads. Easy work on the clears. 
you want really solid control so when you're doing those slices from one corner right across to the other corner you want them to go accurately and over 90 percent of the time and of course it is helpful to be able to get a good smash off if your partner or sorry if your opponent has lifted short and you want to finish the rally i hope you guys have found that super helpful we will see you next time round